Some people say he's a myth, an urban legend, a made-up story meant to scare people. However, I've seen him. I've seen what he's capable of. I've seen how frightening he really is. And I never want to see him again. I was around the age of 11. I lived in the country with my mom, dad, and eight-year-old sister. The entire town was surrounded by forests. And not very many people lived in it. It was a simple town. No big business chains or anything like that. All the shops were family-owned. In fact, our family owned a small bakery that was actually the downstairs level of our home. My sister Abigail and I would always go to that tiny park by the edge of the woods to play with the other children, the ones that lived in that town. There weren't very many, so we all knew each other. Sometimes my sister would go to the park by herself while I did my homework. One day, she came into my room while I was working on some math problems. Hey! She said to me excitedly. I met someone new at the park. You should come meet him. I turned to her with a smile. I can't, Abby, I said. Mom says I can't go out and play until my homework's finished and my room's clean. But he's not going to be there all day, said Abby. He's probably already gone. I'm sure he'll come and play another day, I said, turning back to my work. I'll meet him next time. I had quite a bit of homework for the next couple of days. Abby would always try to get me to play in the park with her and her friend, who she didn't seem to know the name of. But I was too busy. Finally, it was Saturday, and I didn't have anything to do. We went to the park together, and we played on the seesaw. Where's your new friend? I asked her. I guess he's not here yet, she replied. I was beginning to wonder if his friend was imaginary. After about 15 minutes, a younger kid came up to us and tugged on Abby's sleeve. Hey, Abby, he said. Tall stranger's back. Let's go play with him. Abby hopped off the seesaw and urged me to follow. I felt uneasy at hearing the boy call his friend tall stranger. All the same, my curiosity was too great, and I followed. All the children headed into the forest, gathered around a dark tree. I stood by my sister and gasped, seeing that it wasn't a tree at all, but an unnaturally tall man. He had to be eight or nine feet tall. He was so thin. I thought the wind was going to blow him away. He was wearing a black business suit. His arms were too long to be proportional. I squinted, trying to see his chalk-white face, but for some reason, I couldn't make it out. It was as if there was no face at all. Something about the man unnerved me. Part of me was enticed to come closer, but the other part of me was screaming, telling me to run away. There was a faint ringing in my ears. The children circled around him, for whatever reason, they were more drawn to him than I was. I wondered if it had anything to do with the fact that I was older than all of them a few years. They reached up to him, touching his thin, bony white hands. Abby was trying to push through the other kids so that she could touch the man as well. I looked at her face. Her eyes seemed almost hypnotized, as if the man's presence was luring her into some kind of trap. I looked back up to the man and gasped, seeing how multiple tentacle-like arms were coming from him, reaching slowly to the children. They cooed softly, reaching their hands up excitedly. The ringing in my ears was now painfully loud. I screamed and covered them, and I felt dazed. My mind was foggy, and my vision was blurring. Abby was still trying to get closer to the man, but without thinking, I grabbed her hand and ran as quickly out of the woods as I could. I didn't even look back. Once back in the park, Abby yanked her arm away from me, practically sobbing. Why did you do that? She yelled. I wanted to play with a tall stranger. Abby... I said, panting. That thing, it is bad. I don't even know what it is. Please, don't ever go near it again. You can't make me, Abby screamed at me. I'll tell Mom not to let you go, I said. I'll say there's a, there's a creepy man always hanging around the park. She won't let us go anymore. Why don't you want to come here anymore, said Abby. I don't want you to be around that thing, I replied. And I took her hand and I led her home. I had told Mom about the stranger in the park, leaving out the details of how unnatural he was. But she didn't seem to think anything of it. She said it was probably just someone's father that we didn't know him or something. I didn't want to argue. I just, I just had to make sure Abby didn't go to the park myself. 
Mom soon changed her mind, however. The next day on the news, there was a report of three missing children. They were siblings, and Abby and I had just seen them in the park the day before, gazing up at that creature in the forest. According to the news story, they had gone to the park, and they had never returned home. Their parents were distraught. There's no sign of struggle, though. They seemed to have simply vanished. After seeing the story, Mom seemed to have decided the stranger I told her about was probably not to be trusted, and she had forbade us from going to the park without an adult. Disappearances didn't stop other kids from going. For each day, more children were disappearing. Again, there was no evidence as to where they could have gone. We wondered why parents kept letting their kids go, but then I thought, what if they were going without their parents knowing? I had to be careful. I needed to keep a close eye on Abby. A week went by, and Abby and I were the only children left in the whole town. The police were searching everywhere for all of the missing kids, but they hadn't come even close to solving the case. It all felt so unrealistic. Like a dream. How could dozens of kids go missing without a trace? Strange things started to happen to Abby as the next week rolled on. She started getting out of bed in the middle of the night, standing next to it, staring blankly at the wall, not moving for hours, and then she'd lay and sleep once more. When I caught her doing this, I told her the next morning. She said she couldn't remember. Abby had also stopped eating. Mom was getting worried and urged her to eat, but she always said that she wasn't hungry. She was drawing strange pictures obsessively, as if she'd been controlled by something unseen. The pictures all had a very messy circle with a scribbled X drawn over it, saying things like, seize me, run, other disturbing phrases and words. Sometimes I'd watch her draw these pictures, her eyes glassy, her hand moving abnormally fast across the page. Finally, one night, I heard her get out of bed. I stood up and I went to the hall, and I saw her leaving her room. This was a first. All the other times, she just stood like a statue next to her bed. I tried calling to her, but she didn't respond. I followed her, and she left the house and out into the night. It was cold, slightly windy, and neither of us had shoes on. I walked closely behind her, but it seemed that she was unaware that I was even there. I even tapped her on the shoulder, but she completely ignored me. And then, then I saw that we were heading into the park. Abby, I whispered urgently, we shouldn't be here. Let's go home. She didn't answer. I grabbed her arm and I pulled her back, but for some odd reason, she seemed stronger than me. She continued to walk through the park and into the forest. I didn't want to go in there, but I wasn't going to leave Abby alone. Our surroundings got darker as we headed deeper into the woods. I followed Abby so much further into the trees than before when we had seen that tall creature, and again, I tried to tell her to come home with me, but she stayed silent. There was a very faint ringing in my ears again. Further and further we walked until finally we came to an area where the trees were less dense and was lit by moonlight. Abby stopped walking. I stood next to her. I hugged her arm and urged her to turn around. The ringing in my ears started growing louder, and my head began to hurt. I closed my eyes, holding my head in pain as the high-pitched whine became too loud to withstand. Suddenly, it stopped. I opened my eyes, looking up slowly. I wanted to scream, but no sound came out. He was standing right in front of me towering above me like some kind of living tree. I looked at Abby and I saw her staring up at him, her eyes blank as if she was in a trance. Abby! I gasped, but my voice was hoarse. Please, let's go! Run! Still, she didn't move. I grabbed her shoulders and shook her. Abby! She slowly tilted her head to the side, staring at me. It was eerie, the look she was giving me. Still, she remained silent. Just then, I saw a thin tentacle-like hand wrap around Abby's throat. She was ripped out of my grasp. I screamed, watching as she was lifted into the air. I wanted to run, but my legs wouldn't move, and I couldn't, I couldn't look away. Abby was struggling, choking from the man's grasp. He seemed to be staring at her with his non-existent face. A, a fierce wind blew through the trees for a mere second. And then everything was still and silent. Almost too silent. Abby was limp, her head 
hanging down and I couldn't see her face. The man slowly sat down on the fourth floor and she stood next to him, seeming to be unconscious. I wanted to approach her, but I was still glued to the spot. Nothing prepared me for what happened next. Abby slowly lifted her head and stared at me. I gasped, horrified at her face. Her skin was pallid, clammy looking. Her eyes were sunken in, blank, sleepless shadows underneath her eyelids. And then, then she began to cry blood. She wasn't sobbing or even moving in any way. She just stood there, unblinking, blood running from her eyes and down her cheeks. I felt like I was going to be sick. And I was aware of this many glowing eyes watching us. I saw the shadows of children in the distance. They disappeared as soon as I had noticed them. I, I looked back to Abby and saw her body fading into the darkness, becoming nothing but a silhouette of her former self, and then... And then she was gone. I felt tears running down my face, but I couldn't move a muscle or make a sound. I stared up at the tall, no-faced man, and he began to walk away, finally disappearing into the trees. I stood there for maybe an hour before I was able to move. I fell to my knees and I sobbed and I continued to look around to see if Abby would come back. I called out for her, but I knew she was gone. I lay on the wet, leafy ground, shivering, crying. Hours later, a group of policemen had found me in the forest. It seemed Mom had called the police once she had noticed Abby and I weren't in our beds. The men had to lift me off the ground and carry me home, but when we got to my house, they questioned me about my sister, where she had gone. Man, I said softly, a tall, slender man in a, in a black suit. It took her and the other children away. Can you describe him? said one of the policemen. He was as tall as a tree. Skinnier than me, I explained, shaking from the memory of the creature. His skin was white, his arms were too long. He had no face. At one point he had more than two arms, but they looked like they look like tentacles. The policemen looked at each other. And I wasn't sure if they believed me or not. Shortly after the incident, Mom was packing up the house. The police were still searching for Abby and the other missing children, but they found nothing. We ended up moving very far away from that town and into the city. She hoped it would be safer. I still don't know if anyone believed me about the Slender Man. Years had gone by. When I was in college... I moved away from my home, I got an apartment on my own, I never told her, but I continued to see the Slender Man periodically. I saw him outside in the streets at night. I even saw him outside my house a few times. Sometimes I had the strangest feeling that he was in my room when I was asleep, watching me. I knew I couldn't run from it, but I didn't want Mom around. I didn't know what he wanted, all I knew was that I, I didn't want him around anymore. And finally, my sightings of him decreased in number. And I can't explain why or how, but I, I was relieved. However, it didn't chase away the nightmares I had every night. Always the same. My sister's bloody face fading into darkness. You know, some say he's a myth, urban legend, a meme. This story. Some say he eats the children he abducts. Others say he simply kills them. Only I know the truth. Many people claim to have seen him. I know they haven't. Slenderman doesn't eat children. From what I saw, I can't explain what he does with them. It almost seems like he, he steals their souls. Steals them away in some other dimension. I'm, and I witnessed it. People ask me if I've heard of the Slenderman. And you know what I say? No. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video. Because this is October, I'm going to make this nice, short, and sweet. If you'd like to help support the show or the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. If you'd like to get yourself some new Halloween and creepypasta-inspired teas, you can head over to etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. And if you want to catch me... Creeps McPasta and Mew during our live Halloween tour around the southern U.S., head over to creepypasta.showfetti.com. That's creepypasta.s-h-o-f-e-t-t-i.com. Hang on to your hats, kids, because this year 
is a 31-day Halloween countdown. Happy Halloween and sweet dreams. <laughs>